we take a very long-term view, uh, whether it is uh, China or whether it's Brexit or any other issue that is uh, front and center today, the key for us is to think about how are we participating in all of these countries, in all of these communities where technology is creating local surplus. Uh, because to me, as a multinational CEO, what's key is how do we create local opportunity and local competitiveness and surplus for all of our partners and customers. And whether it's in China or whether it's in uh, Britain, that's the focus we have. So are there any adjustments you're going to have to make or you're looking to make in that long-term view because of what's happening between the U.S. and Not China? Not really. I mean, really? to me, I'm mostly focused on saying, look, what is it that we have to do to keep innovating and then making sure that our participation in the countries that we operate in is adding value. And ultimately, the governments across these countries will have to achieve a new equilibrium for how trade and fair trade happens. Uh, but that's not something I control. The thing that I can control is our innovation and the opportunity we create around innovation. So you don't look at moving any type of manufacturing of some of the Microsoft devices that have done so well? Look, I mean, anything that we have to do in terms of tactical adjustments to supply chains because of some changing trade regime, we'll look at it. But that's not, that's tactical. What the long term is really focused on, how is our innovation helping? our participation in the country, but more importantly, the opportunity it creates for the people in that country. A lot of people have soured on mixed reality, but Microsoft has found real success focusing on business relationships with these devices. So I'm just curious, where do you see, which field do you think will bring in the most money for Microsoft in terms of HoloLens 2? You know, we were very excited with HoloLens. When we first launched HoloLens, we knew that this was a new medium uh, and it had to find its new expression. Uh, and the place where HoloLens is being adopted is in the enterprise broadly, whether it's for a new way to collaborate and communicate where the physical and virtual worlds come together, or to deliver training um, in a way that you can, in fact, upskill your workforce. So these are very horizontal that span all industries but also completely changes how you think about planning for manufacturing or construction or healthcare. Why do you think that some Microsoft employees are unhappy with the use of HoloLens with the Department of Defense? You know, first of all, we welcome dialogue with our employees on a continuous basis. When this first came up, we had the dialogue and we made a, you know, we deliberated and we made a principled decision that we are not going to withhold technology uh, from institutions that we have elected uh, in democracies uh, to protect the freedoms we enjoy. And uh, we were very transparent about that decision uh, and we'll continue to have that dialogue. And we're also clear-eyed about the responsibility we have as a corporate citizen on the unintended consequences of technology. And we've done this with privacy, we've done this with cybersecurity, even calling for a Geneva Convention, uh, and the same thing with AI and ethics.